What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Um, Getting into this episode of GH. Listen, I enjoyed this episode. I really did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, So today is the day the Bachelor and Bachelorette parties of Jason and Carly. This shit was hilarious. Because Sasha was running around worrying about what, you know, side gigs um brando's been doing and stuff because you know remember before he did mention like oh i've been doing side gigs to make some extra money she's thinking that the side gigs are mob related so of course she kept talking to willow about it and stuff like that and you know it got to the point where she started asking brando about it and brando was being very evasive about it um so of course carly assured sasha that it's not mob related like whatever he's doing ain't got nothing to do with the corinthosis um she was still leery about it until the bachelorette party got started. Um, and that's when Brando realized that the bachelorette party was going to be there. And he was like, oh, shit. He was panicking, so he needed Dante's help. And Dante, he told Dante what his side gig was. Dante was like, he was busting out laughing because Dante was like, shit, I can't help you with that. <laughs> Come to find out the side, one of the side gigs was he a damn Chippendales dancer. I said, you a stripper? He's a fucking stripper on the side. I said, this is what his side gigs was? Shaking his little fanny for money every day? I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. You got to make your money. I am not mad at that. You know, you got to do what you got to do out here, especially when you got a new child on the way. And he was sitting there. He was the, the stripper for Carly Bachelorette Party. And it, it was entertaining. I will say that. He was doing a good job. He got some moves. I was like, where the fuck you learn these moves from? A YouTube tutorial video or whatever? I was like, he he been searching the, the you know, YouTube for these little dance moves and shit. I said, okay. It was hilarious, though. That shit was funny. Even Carly and him just got a chuckle out of that shit. Um, but yeah, that's what he's been doing. Stripping and um, cleaning grease traps or whatever. I'm not mad at it. And you know what? Sasha was amused. And, you know, she was happy just as long as, it, you know, he came home safe every day. I like him and Sasha as a couple. I really do. I hope nothing bad happens to either one of them or the child. But I do like them as a couple. You know what I mean? Um, It was just hilarious. I said it. So I see that since they couldn't get Magic Milo, they got Brando instead. I said, Brando trying to get Magic Milo a little competition, a little run for his little abracadabra. I said, okay. I see you. Um, well, this is good for Sasha. At least you got a live-in stripper now. So whenever you want a little lap dance, you feeling a little frisky, you got a stripper. Throw a little couple dollars at him or whatever. You got you a little little, little strip tease. I said, okay, I, I feel you. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Olivia, of course, was being all up in Dante business about him and Sam. Talking about, oh, are you going to see Sam tonight? Dante was like, listen... <laughs> I like how Dante handled it. He was like, listen, my private life is just that, private. <laughs> I agree, because a lot of times with parents, like, especially when you grown, it's like, keep them at arm's length when, you know, keep them at arm's length when it comes to your per your personal business. When it comes to your privacy, just give them a little bit of answers. And it's not like Dante really has the answers himself. Like, he doesn't really know what him and Sam are doing. You know what I mean? So it's not like he can tell his mother what he don't even know, you know? And it's like, that's what pissed me off about Olivia, too, sometimes. Because she was all up, all up in Lulu business with Dustin when Dante was away. And mind you, Lulu and Dante were divorced. You know what I mean? She had every right to move on. And Olivia just kept crying and trying to guilt trip her every chance she get. But here Lulu is in a coma. And now look at Olivia. Oh, giddy. Oh, you got to move on with your life. Are you and Sam dating? Are you got? Where was this energy when it came to Lulu, though? Like, I understand, you know, that's not your child or whatever, but she was still your daughter-in-law, the mother of your grandchild. You should have understood, as a woman, she should have understood where Lulu was coming from. You know what I mean? But she never really tried to. So that's what irritates me. But I'm glad, you know, Dante don't be telling her shit because you don't need to. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, Sam, you know, was at the Savoy or whatever trying to talk to Curtis about the Drew situation. And Curtis was anxious. You like he was trying to usher her the fuck up out of there. He was like, "Listen, you gotta go. I got a private party coming. You got to go." 
And the private party, of course, was where Jason was holding his bachelor party because, you know, Spinelli and Michael didn't really want it to be an awkward situation between Jason and Sam. And my thing is, it shouldn't be awkward between them. They, Even though they're not together anymore and he's moved on or whatever and she apparently moved on, it should not be any awkwardness between Jason and Sam. Like, it really should not be. At the end of the day, they still share a child together. So you're going to have to talk. You're going to have to be around each other. This should not be awkward for either one of them. I don't see why it should be. You know what I mean? So, of course, Sam pulled Jason to the side to talk to him and, you know, wish him well on his wedding and whatnot. Tell mom, sure, you know, it's going to be everything you and Carly want it to be. And she's sitting there telling Curtis, well, you know, Jason always chose Carly, made her priority, and now he no longer has to choose. That's what was pissing me off about Sam. Because Sam acts like, I mean, yes, did Jason always run when Carly called? Yeah, he did. But at the end of the day, it's not like he wasn't there for Sam. It's not like, oh, he abandoned Sam all the time whenever Carly called. No, he was always there for Sam, too. He was there for every fucking body. Whenever any one of them was in trouble, Michael, Sam, Carly, Sonny, no matter which one, whenever any one of them, Christina, whoever, whenever any one of them was in trouble, Liz, he was always there. Always. You know what I mean? He did not pick one over the fucking other. Yeah, he spread himself too thin. Yeah, he was always there for Carly, but shit, he was there for every last one of y'all too. Kidnapping, shootings, all type of shit. He came to the rescue. So don't try to act like he, he was never there. You know what I mean? Like, And there was plenty of times where Jason actually did stand up to Carly for Sam. Like, especially after they got engaged and Carly was trying to dismiss Sam, talking about, oh, I need to talk to Jason alone. I remember that episode, and Jason shut that shit down. Jason said, nah, we're engaged, we're about to get married, whatever you can say to me, you can say in front of Sam. And Carly, I remember Carly was like, so this is how it's going to be from now on? You damn right. That's his wife. His soon-to-be at the time. You damn right. That's how. That's like Sonny. When Sonny take business meetings or somebody want to talk to Sonny, he don't dismiss Carly. Shit, he talks freely in front of Carly. And Carly wouldn't have it any other way. So why should Sam be any different? You know what I mean? But Sam need to pump her brakes, though. It's not what she thinks it is. And she should know Jason better than this. Like, you should know Jason didn't just out the blue decide to marry Carly. Like, you should know there's a bigger picture to this. But whatever. Um, so she ended up filling Curtis in on the whole Drew situation and... What's going on with that? And he, you know, he wanted to help her out. So he called Phyllis because she was his contact at Crichton Clark. Remember, Phyllis used to work there. So she told him, you know, she can get in contact with somebody like a file clerk or whatever that used to work there that could give them some information. So they're finally moving that along. Um, so anyway, Jason, little bachelor party, you know, wasn't entertaining. Not to that extent. It wasn't as entertaining as Carly's. That's for damn sure. I'm like, listen, Jason, next time, let me throw your bachelor party, sir, because I will have butt naked booty holes walking all over that bitch. I'm just saying I, I will make it pop for you. I'm just saying. Um, But I guess it was entertaining for Jason because, you know, that's that's entertain. You know, it's entertainment for Jason to just stand around and drink a beer, I guess. And, you know, he probably paid Curtis good money to host, you know, the bachelor party there. Um. But then freaking Joey Novak came up in a party with his goons, showing his ass. You know, I was grabbing a bottle of whiskey or whatever, just, just you know, being all type of disrespectful and uncouth. Talking about some, oh, how does it feel to be banging, you know, hitting your wife's, your dead boss's wife and stuff like that. I was shocked that Spinelli jumped bad. I was like, okay, Spinelli. And speaking of Spinelli, um, he mentioned that Ellie broke up with him permanently. I said, damn, I hate that they ruined Ellie and Spinelli's relationship because I really liked them together. I really did. I really, really did. I love them together. And I'm sad that their relationship is over. But I was surprised that Spinelli with Joey Novak. I said, go ahead, Spinelli. You done been around Jason long enough. You should know how to fight. And, you know, a fight done broke out. Spinelli done punched um, Novak in the face or whatever. And, you know, Dante done showed up or whatever. And, you know, he done locked everybody's ass up. <laughs> Dante said, look, I ain't got all day for this shit. I'm about to lock all y'all up. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that, Olivia was talking to Carly or whatever, talking about, oh, if she was marrying somebody else, then she would have felt it was too soon. 
I'm like, even if she is marrying Jason or whatever, it is still too soon. But we all know why they're getting married, though. But I can't wait for Carly to have a sit down with Monica, though. That shit gonna be interesting. Um, cause you know that's like vinegar and water. They neither one of them mix. They do not mix well together. So anyway, Jax went to go see um Ava or whatever to talk about Nina and this mysterious boyfriend she got. Um, Ava wasn't really much help for him because she was like, shit, I don't know nothing about him. She was like, you know, Nina was evasive about him. You know, she never really gave any details about old boy. So, you know, Jax got on the phone, called his pilot, and he was like, listen, I need you to get the jet ready. I'm going to Nixon Falls. I I really didn't think that he needed a plane to go to Nixon Falls. I'm like, Nixon Falls, you could drive there. But I guess, you know, a plane is shorter time. But I'm like, you really want to spend all that money in gas? on a jet i mean he got the money don't get me wrong he got the money i'm just saying it costs a lot of fucking money to be gassing up them jets like i would have just drove i would have hired me a little car service sat in the back listening to my mood music sipping champagne on my way to nixon falls go bust some ass i'm just saying that's what i would have did but you know i guess that's some rich people shit honestly though nina is like pissing me off because she keeps talking about how she want mike to learn who he really is and stuff before she could be with him i'm like dummy if he find out who he really is he ain't gonna want to be with your ass like you done kept this secret but it was something about um it was something about a recent interview that maurice bernard did that kind of jumped out at me where he said you know even if mike gets his memory even if sonny gets his memories back it doesn't change how he feels in his heart so I said that might be a clue because what if he does get his memories back and yeah, he's going to be angry with Nina, but what if he still got residual feelings for her because of his time as Mike? You know what I'm saying? What if he actually caught some type of real feelings for the girl? I was like, oh, that's going to be messy. <laughs> it's going to be messy. I can't wait to see how this all unfold when it's all said and done because Phyllis was trying to tell Nina to live in a moment, like stop worrying about who he really is and just live in a moment. But I'm like, Nina, like... I think it's her guilty conscience, honestly. Like, she's just feeling guilty. Um, But I'm like, she might as well just tell that man that his name is Sonny Corinthos and he's from Port Charles. Just tell that man who he really is. Like, that's all you got to do. Like, why try to get him to figure it out on his own? Because clearly he's not. How is he supposed to do that? Um, Well, it's a few ways, but. So, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. See you all later. Peace.